other precious visitors and guests. Adrian, I didn't know you even had a sister. So nice to know. And uh, thank God she looks nothing like you. So we're very thankful, you know. God bless you. We're happy to have you. Thank you for coming. Malachi chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. In the King James Version of Scripture, Sister Debbie, we love you, all your family. God bless you. Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up, yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often to one another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine. I love this portion of scripture. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall return then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. The Lord said, there will be a book of remembrance. And there will be people written in that book. And when you're written in that book, on the day, Sister Bradley, that I make up my jewels. You ever heard of somebody refer to Man, they're a jewel. That, that lady, she's a jewel. That guy, he's just a jewel. I want you to know. I, I, I just hope that someday that I'm referred to like that, Mr. Jerry. Because you know what? I think you're a jewel. You're a jewel. So maybe somebody will think that we're just a jewel. That'd be all right. Because the Lord said, on that day, when he makes up his jewels, Man, it's going to pay. It's going to pay to do what's right. It's going to pay to live for God. It's going to pay to be a jewel in God's kingdom. Can somebody say amen? amen. I simply want to speak upon this for a few minutes. Found among the jewels. Found among the jewels. Could we pray together, Lord, I love you and I thank you. I'm so thankful to stand before your precious people, God. I, I, I worship you and I adore you. I thank you for what we feel in this house, the warmth of your love, the radiance of your people. Lord, you said you would live in the praises of your people, so I know you're here because you inhabit those praises. And I'm thankful for that in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Brother Rexy Knight, his precious wife, Gail, are here with us. Gail, we love you. We love you too. Rex is filling in for Casey today. He did a great job on the drums. We appreciate them going up here today from Burleson area. My goodness, what a deal. Well, I want to tell you a little story that I found, and I think it'll be interesting. Uh, we, we had some, some of our, uh, our kids last night, Brandon and Rachel had been in Arkansas over the weekend and they were taking a little R&R &R in the Hot Springs area. And uh, I bet if they'd have known about this, they probably would have uh, went out there and, and, and done something more than just, just try to walk around Hot Springs. I found this story just the other day. It says a glistening white diamond, half the size of a quarter, was discovered at Arkansas's Crater of Diamond State Park on Wednesday, park officials said. Shaped like an icicle, the 8.52 carat gem is the fifth largest diamond found by a visitor to the state park since the site was established in 1972. Park visitor Bobby Oscarson of Longmont, Colorado, 
discovered the diamond while digging around the pig pen. That is a 37 acre search field inside the park named for its muddy terrain after rainfall. The large white diamond was found by Bobby Oscarson of Longmont, uh, Colorado. At first, she thought the diamond was a quartz crystal because of its size and shape. But the park, a park staffer confirmed later that it was indeed a natural diamond in the rough. Quote, Miss Oscarson and her boyfriend, Travis Dillon, saw the Crater of Diamond State Park on Arkansas Highway on the map. And in the nearby the town of Hot Springs and decided to visit the park. And what a lucky visit for her, park interpreter Wayman Cox said in his press release. Oscarson named her find the Esperanza diamond after her niece and planned on keeping the gem. More than 30 diamonds have been discovered in the park's search area this year. Cox said above normal rainfall this year is one, above normal rainfall this year is one reason for the frequent finds. Rain plus the regular plowing of the search field by maintenance staff increases visitors' chances of finding diamonds in the search area, he said. If you will note, this is an Arkansas commemorative quarter and there is a large diamond effigy that is engraved on the state quarter because it's called the Diamond State. The place where you can just find diamonds lying in the field. More than 75,000 diamonds have been unearthed in the park. Shall I say that again? More than 75,000 diamonds have been unearthed in the park since the first diamonds were discovered there in 1906. The largest rough diamond ever discovered in Crater of the Diamond State Park and the largest ever found in the United States is the Uncle Sam Diamond, which was found in 1924, and it was a hefty 40.23 carats, according to the park website. No estimate of the Esperanza's diamond value was available, but just for perspective's sake, the Uncle Sam Diamond was cut twice, the second diamond being 12.42 carat gem, that sold for $150,000 in 1971. That's the, the equivalent of $880,000 in today's money, just under a million dollars. Diamonds in a muddy field can be found in Arkansas. They just found another one the Esperanza diamond. So don't everybody get up at once and run out to the car. But I'm here to tell you that diamonds can be found in the most unlikely places. It's an amazing thing that in a muddy old field in the middle of Arkansas, you can go out there with a pail and a shovel and you can look for diamonds to your heart's content. You know, I don't know that there's even a charge to get in the park. If it is, it's just a very minor charge. Has anybody here ever been there before? Do you know what it costs to get in? Don't remember? But it was a very small fee, right? I want you to understand. Many of our lives are like diamonds in the rough. Many of our lives are just waiting to be discovered. And God wants to gather up one day his jewels. And when he does, I pray that we would be among them. Can somebody say amen, amen. amen. In verse 14 it says, Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is that we have kept his ordinance? And that we have walked mournfully, mournfully before the Lord of hosts. This scripture tells us that, that there are those that... that uh, that have served God, have lived for God, have once come to church, maybe known the Lord in a greater relationship than the relationship you currently now have with God. But you've seen very little return on your investment. Maybe you have not felt like you were adequately uh, rewarded. Maybe you've been church hurt somewhere. And I hate that term, but it is a term that we're hearing more and more and more of that my family member or a friend of mine was hurt at a church. 
Or somebody in the church said something that wounded them. Somebody did something that offended them. Let me tell you something. Not everybody that goes to church is a Christian. Do you think you're coming up in here amongst uh, people who are perfect? Do you feel like the person sitting next to you is perfect? Judging by some of the people I know you're sitting by, I know that not to be true. If you were sitting by me, I'm not perfect. But let me tell you something. What we've got to come to the fact is that we're not living for one another. We're living for God. And God loves his people. And God is full of mercy. And God is the righteous judge. And he is love. The scripture says it. God is love. But not everybody you come in contact with is going to be kind to you. Not everybody you, you visit with is going to be loyal to you. Not everybody you bump into is going to rub your fur the right direction. So let me tell you something. Don't judge God. Don't judge the church. Don't judge the truth based upon other people. Judge the truth based upon the truth. Judge God based upon His Spirit. Judge the Lord based upon His Word. Because in that day it's going to pay to be found among His jewels. I want to be found among those whose names are written down in that book of remembrance. Can somebody say amen? amen? You know, swimming lessons are definitely worth it. You know how I know? Because I've fallen in the water before. Not only have I fallen in the water, but I've had perpetrators who have kicked me in the water. And after being shoved in the water, I was glad that I had the swimming lessons. I will tell you this. You'll be thankful for every church service you ever came to, every Bible study you ever attended. You'll be glad for every time you ever came and your kids were involved in Sunday school or kids praise. You'll be thankful on some day of your life for every time that you enhanced your relationship with God by drawing closer to God and not further from Him. I'll tell you, you'll be thankful one day for the lessons that you've learned at the foot of the cross because God is coming back one day and He's going to gather up His jewels and it's going to pay to be among them. Yeah. When swimming, all the floating, all the holding your breath, all the treading water paid off the first time you found yourself in water over your head. <laughs> Beloved, I want you to know that God keeps a record. Turn to your neighbor and say, God keeps a record. God keeps a record. How many of you know that your employer keeps a record? <laughs> Can I see that one more time? I, had, I looked away. How many of your employers think they are God? Seven of you. Well, I want you to anonymously go back to work tomorrow and write this on a post-it note. And inconspicuously, I want you to put it on their computer monitor. BTW, you are not God. <laughs> Then run as fast as you can. <laughs> Seekers of the I want it now generation. Somebody say amen. amen. I want it now. I want instant gratitude. I want instant gratification. I want my hamburger with secret sauce on it within 30 seconds or it's free. I've gotten to where I go through the go into the restaurant that has a drive-through window. And I have to fight back bitterness over them serving all the people at the drive-through before I get my food. And I got out of my car and walked in their place and said, order in, please. You might as well say, just take as long as you want to when you get to the counter. If you say order in. I've got to wear now when they say, is this for here or to go? I say, whichever one is the fastest. That's what I'll have. I'll tell on John Harris, we go in, we standing in line, there were 29 of us waiting on an order in. John goes outside, gets in his car, pulls through the drive-thru, gets his food, comes in, sits down, and we got our food, we come up, John's wrapping up, he's finishing. I said, how in the world did you get your food? He said, I went through the drive-thru, honey, and I came in here and I finished. We live in a generation, we want it right here, right now. Don't take no longer than it has to take. We're all compelled to throw in the towel if our efforts 
are not immediately acknowledged and rewarded. However, I'm a part of another group. I'm a part of them that are just thankful to be on the list for God's mercy. Yeah. Just thankful to be on God's list for His grace. Just thankful to stand in line that He can show me the mercy that I don't deserve. Because while we deserve judgment, God gave us mercy. I'm more compelled to hang on just so I can be uh, found uh, judged by a merciful God instead of one who races to cast judgment. The prophet describes in this passage of people who often speak to one another are the ones that are encouraged to become jewels before God. They met together and they speak to one another. Now I'm here to tell you we have more ways to speak to one another than any way in any other time in the whole wide world. We had, I didn't know, uh, I, you know, I'm dumb as a box of rocks about some things. And my kids have an iPhone and it seems like whatever phone I've, they've got, I, I don't have. You know, you know, they got an iPhone, I got a flip phone, you know. And, they, and, and the whole time they said, Dad, I want to FaceTime you. And I said, Okay, how you do that? Well, just, just you know, on your iPhone, you go. I said, I don't have an iPhone. I have a me phone or my phone. It's just my phone, but it ain't iPhone. And I said, so I don't know how to access FaceTime. So you know, now you know, when you was a little kid, you got to you know you light years ahead of uh, of now. You know, when you're a little kid, Jay. You know, way back in the thirties and forties. They said, one day, you'll be able to talk on this device and you'll be able to see the person on the other end. It's all Flash Gordon stuff. That stuff's happening for real. Okay, now it don't matter where Buddy is in the whole wide world. I can see my Buddy right now if I want to. Is he in the nursery? Can we FaceTime in there? Okay. That's my grandson. You better be good in there. I want you to know this. I want you to know that we need a network of communication that gives no place for wounded hearts. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about a communication that doesn't allow uh, wounded hearts to communicate with us, but gives no place where we could possibly wound someone else. Communication that's a safety net and a safeguard in the church. That's why the church is called the bride of Christ, is to be adorned for God. That's what he's going to do. One day he's going to come back and, and, and he's going to make up his jewels. They're going to be the bride. It's going to be presented to him without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. But there'll be such, such, a, such a spirit of solidarity. There'll be such a spirit of love, such a spirit of, of care for one another. There should be a carefulness. We should always be the guardian of our lips, the guardian of our mind, and we should never allow anything that's going to wound somebody that comes into our presence. Yes. Now, I've just loaded your wagon. Yes. There ought to be such a spirit in the church that we love everybody right. that comes through these doors. Yes. And it doesn't matter where they come from. And it doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter what they're going through. It doesn't matter if they're on drugs. It doesn't matter if they're sold their soul to something other than God. Let me tell you something. When they come in this house, we need to be the guardian of our words, the guardian of our spirit. We need to be the safety net and the blanket of love that would, that would venture to those people and let them know that in the presence of God, there is love and fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there's pleasure forevermore. Amen. The jewels of God will have the characteristics of a gem. I can't help but believe that. The Bible said that there would be those that would speak to one another and that they would share with one another where are they going to do this? I can't help but think that they would do this in the church. 
as part of the body of Christ. He talks about a book of remembrance. Could it be that there's some type of roll call of faithfulness that God has designed that our names could be written down in a special book that we are being judged, every one of us, based upon our performance and our love for one another. Let me tell you something. If your carnal employer is writing down the deeds that you have done, how much more does your heavenly Father who notices the sparrow when it falls, if we are compassionate, if we are good, if we are merciful, if we are inclusive, and not exclusive. How much more does he love us? How much more merit do we get? How much more resolve is there to do good before the Lord? The Bible said when the book of remembrance is read that we're going to want our name in that book. Is there somebody here that wants your name to be in that book of remembrance? I'm making it my business to be in that book. I believe that everything that we've ever done, every time we ever came to church, every sacrifice we ever made, every bill we ever paid, I'm here to tell you it's going to be worth it all when God makes up his jewels. The passage goes on to say in the day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. As a matter of fact, we are loved as his children. That's why we're always referred to as the children of Almighty God. Jesus is saying here on that day when I gathered up my treasured ones, I will treat him with a full pardon as I would my own son, granting them things undeserved by law, but allowed simply because they are mine. God one day will show us the ultimate favor. I say God will one day show us the ultimate favoritism. Right now, under the dispensation of grace, God is no respecter of person. But there will come a day when the door of that dispensation is closed. And when that day is come and the dispensation of grace is closed, then he will show favor to his own. Right. In this portion of scripture, he said, I'll show favor to them because they are mine. Right. Who do you belong to? Who do you belong to? In other words, the Lord is saying, I am the righteous judge and I will bless whom I will bless and I will curse whom I will curse. I believe this with all my heart. It's going to be worth it all to be on God's good side when the door of this, of this dispensation is closed. Can somebody say amen? amen? I believe that every music rehearsal, God keeps a record. I believe that every time we came early and we bowed our knee to pray, God keeps a record. I believe that every time you came up here and cleaned the church and part of your team didn't show up and you wound up cleaning the church by yourself, I'm here to tell you, God keeps a record in the book of remembrance. Every time you witness to somebody and they didn't come to church, but later somebody you never even talked to ask you about God and wind up coming to church receiving the gift of God, God keeps a record. I'll tell you that every time you sang in the choir when you were about half sick, but you knew somebody needed to come sing and you came on anyway, God keeps a record. Every time you taught a Sunday school class when you thought you couldn't even go in there and face those kids one more time, the Lord of glory wrote your name down in a book of remembrance. And he said, on the day when I gather up my jewels, he said, you shall be among them. I'm here just to affirm. Yeah. I'm here just to hope. I hope that you're encouraged. Every time you were a kid's praise leader on Sunday, every time you wrangled your children to church, and I do mean wrangle, if y'all ever call somebody on your cell phone and you didn't mean to, there's a term for it, but I can't say it here. I had a call here a while back from a precious family in the church of Remain. I know right now they wish to remain unknown. I hadn't asked them. But after I tell the story, you understand why. They called to tell me they're going to be just a little late for church. Uh, or they were, they were about to call. And tell me they're going to be a little late for church. They have evidently pulled my number up on their phone already. 
but they have not pushed sin yet. Or at least they think they have not. <coughs> and I get a phone call from a family that was intends to call me in a minute, but they're in a quandary about what they're going to say to me when they finally get me on the phone. So, they don't know, but the phone's laying there and it's on and it's already called. And I do like I do every time I answer, oh, hello. And I can hear them in the background. No, 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 we can't tell him that. No, 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 don't say that. You can say anything other than that. I'm going, hello, hello, hello. You kids, shut up. You don't want me to stop this car. You pop, stop this car. I'll, where are you at? Come on here, me. I'm going to pop your mouth. I'm going to pop. Pop, you hear pop. Oh, my God. No, let's just tell him that we had to stop and get some gas, you know, uh, and, 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 and we're, but we'll be there shortly. You can't shut up. I told you to shut up. Don't you hit up. Don't you say, if I pull this car, I'll pull your head off. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Screaming, wailing, weeping, gnashing of teeth, kids screaming, crying, they're going to kill them every few minutes, pull over the car and rip their head off. No, don't tell them that. Oh, God, don't tell him that for sure. <laughs> and then finally, the phone goes dead. Hello, hello, hello. Click. And a few moments later, the phone rings, and it's just a couple. Hey, Pastor Hudson. <laughs> How you doing? That's Hudson. This is so and so. We do. How you doing? Oh, we're doing fine. How you doing? We're doing good. We're just blessed of the Lord. We're on our way to church. <laughs> well, bless your heart. How they go? Oh, we are blessed and highly favored. <laughs> the Lord is with us. Now we know we're supposed to be up there and do such such. But you know what? Something came up, and we didn't, didn't get away from the house like we thought we would. And uh, so, you know, this, so I, you know, I just took the time and said, well, how are your kids doing? Oh, they're doing great. They're sitting here in the back. They're so precious. We're on our way to kids' pray. <laughs> All y'all wondering, is that me? Was that, was that our friend? You don't, you don't even know. You know... The most amazing thing about when God makes up his jewels is that even a diamond in the rough is still a diamond. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That ought to make somebody shout right there. That lady had found that diamond over in that part of that field called the pig pen. The reason it was called that because, you know, uh, water comes down through there when it rains and a certain spot. And she found that diamond in the rug down in the area of the field called a pig pen. Is it any wonder that she found that diamond in that particular part of that field? You know what? I do believe this. That, you know, when God makes up his jewels, they're going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're going to come from the clubhouse and the penthouse. They're going to come from the rich house and the poor house. They're going to come from everywhere all over this world. But I will tell you this. In the day that God makes up his jewels, everything you ever did, everything you ever said, everything you've ever done, God keeps a record and he's going to reward those whether we are a diamond that's polished and firmly faceted or we're still a diamond in the rough. The fact is he came to seek and to save that which was lost. God's not trying to save a bunch of good people. I'll tell you right now. Woo, have you ever tried to get some good people to come to church? That's the hardest thing in the world you ever did. My goodness. I ask first, anymore, what kind of people are these we trying to win? Oh, they are good people. 
they're good, fill in the blank, denominational people. They are good, they do this, they do that, teach Sunday school class, they do this, they do that. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't cuss, they don't do this, they don't do that. And I say, well, is there anybody else we can work on? <laughs> because good people think they're good enough without God. And that they really don't need God because they're already good. You know, I think what I'd rather do is find somebody that's just three sheets in the wind. They're sitting on a bar stool. They just beat their wife. They just, they're just mean to their kids. You know what? Because they, they, they start feeling remorse. They start feeling sorry. And they want to repent. And they're already halfway to God. Because they're not worth a dime. God's not looking for some good people to say. God's looking for some people that just say, I need you, Lord. I trust you. I've tried everything in this whole wide world, but I need you. I'm trusting you. You know what? Even diamonds in the rough are still diamonds. I'm on the last page. Somebody say, hey, man. Some will say, well, you know, if I, does, does God just bless the people that do good? Does God just bless the people that go to church? Does God just bless the people that give? Does God just bless the people do all the do's and fail to do all the don'ts? No. Because the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And when we deserved judgment. God gave us mercy. Right. There's only one thing that really matters to God. It's faithfulness. Faithfulness. There's only one thing He's going to reward in the end. It's well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, there are no secrets from God. He knows the very thoughts and the intents of our heart. So, you know, we can't hide anything from Him and hope to ever have your name written in the book of remembrance so you know what, if, if, if you've been trying to, if you've been struggling, trying to hold on to the world with one hand and hold on to God with the other hand, won't you just let go of the, the world and hold on to the unchanging hand of God? Because he knows what you're going through. He knows your need before you ask. He knows your talents, your abilities. He knows exactly your idiosyncrasies. He knows what it's going to take for you to be saved. He's leading you in the paths of right or righteousness for his name's sake. So I want you to know. If God knows you and he sees you and he sees our faults and he sees our failures and he sees the fact that right now we may be a diamond in the rough, but nevertheless, we're still a jewel. Then we should just simply just resign our concept, our will and our idea. How far can you get on your own anyway? How far can you get on your own design, your own will, your own concept? Is anybody in here that can save themselves? I think that we must have an area of resolve that we reach the limits of our own values and convictions and say, this is where I draw the line. Not one inch further. And I mean it because God knows whether we mean it or not. We've got to come to God. The Bible said he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Is there anybody here today that you just want your name written in the Lamb's book of life? You want to be among those jewels. You want your name written in the book of remembrance. You know what? It's not real hard. It's real easy as a matter of fact. All you've got to do is just acknowledge who you are first and then acknowledge who he is and say, Lord, save me. The world is crying out to be saved. They're seeking salvation in everything under the sun, but they're not seeking it in the right place. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. They're, they're, they're romancing every concept on earth with fetishes and, and desires and perverse manner of, of living that, that is not fulfilling that cavity that only God can fill by His love. There's someone sitting in the service today, and here's where I close. You're saying to yourself, Preacher, you don't know me. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. You don't know who hurt me. 
You don't know what I've been through. I will tell you this, you're right. I probably don't know. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've done. I'm so sorry. I don't know who hurt you. But I do know this, I know the one who can heal you. I don't know the one that hurt you. But I know the one. There's an old song that says, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand But I know the one who holds tomorrow And he holds me in his hand I don't have all the answers But I will say this I know one answer His name is Jesus Would you stand with me today? The one thing in this service today that God is not concerned with, and I want to tell you what that one thing is. There's one thing that God is not concerned with. Now, all of us are different. All of us are fearfully and wonderfully made of God. All of us have different intellectual prowess and educational, you know, status and their social status, their socioeconomic achievement among us. There are those who have much and those that have very little. But we're all equal in the eyes of God. Thank God that we are. Can somebody say amen? amen. But there's one thing in this service today that God is not concerned with. And I want to tell you what that one thing is. The one thing that God's not concerned with. Is your past. He's not concerned with your past. It's the thing that we often bring before God as the most preeminent stumbling block between us and our name being written in that book of remembrance. It's the one thing we carry around with us. Some of us are so acquainted with it and so well versed with our past, we can recite it with a moment's notice. Some of us have carried and kept our past so near and dear it's 24 karat gold plated in an effort to allow others to understand that our infirmity of the past has now become our identity. That never has there been a place in the presence of God where he allowed anyone's infirmity to remain their identity. Blind Bartimaeus, when he came to Jesus, his infirmity, Larry, had consumed him. Even the first, the first aspect of his name was blind Bartimaeus. But Mr. Jerry, after his encounter with Jesus, he was never called that again. He was simply referred to as Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. I will tell you this. God's not concerned with your past, so you, you don't need to place that much emphasis on it either. So many people have allowed the past to chart the course of their future. Apostle Paul, as great as he was, knew that if his past as a murderer was to chart the course for his future, then he would be remembered as one of the most prolific criminals in the history of mankind. Instead, he acknowledges that the only way to Defeat your past is to first forget those things which are behind. He said, just stop and write dead in your tracks and forget it. Reaching forth to those things which are ahead. Stop reaching back into defeat. Start reaching forward in faith for the new life as a gemstone before God. That when he makes up his jewels, we'll be one of them. And realize there's a better future in front of you than the sum total of all the problems, the fear, and the hurts in the past. The beauty of the past is just that, is that it's over. It's past. It's behind you. Don't let it be a stumbling block between you and being one of his jewels. You can only, it can only hurt you if you allow it. I've made up my mind that some things are not allowed in my life. My past is not allowed to rule my future. 
My mind is not allowed to dwell on the past. And the voices of my failures are not allowed to eclipse the voice of God promising me a brighter future. Right. And I will tell you this, God knew about my past when he saved me. Now I'm forgiven. Is anybody here today that you would love to be forgiven of something in your life? It's okay to raise your hand. I'm going to raise mine. I've been a mess this week. I asked Sister Hudson to forgive me. I've, I've, been, I've been rowdy. I've been rowdy. Huh. You need forgiveness. Will you come to the right place? Because even though your sins may be as scarlet, the Bible said that he can wash them white as snow. If you receive the Holy Ghost, he said he's going to gather up his jewels. But if you're standing here today without the Spirit of the Lord living, breathing, dwelling, giving you everlasting life, that life more abundantly you can come to God you can be forgiven and your name can be written in this book of remembrance shall we pray Lord I love you Lord you see every heart and every life you see every one of us and God it's going to be worth it all everything we've ever done everything we've ever said everything we've ever given but Lord I want to be close to you the scripture said God longs to call you mine. He wants to erase your past. And he wants to give you a gift. A gift that's given through mercy by his death on the cross. And now it's time to give your life to him because he gave his life so freely on Calvary. So I'd like to ask you, first of all, if you just want to be forgiven. If there's any area of your life where you want to be forgiven, would you meet me down front? I want to just lead by example today. Would you come and meet me? Would you come and pray with me? Jesus. forgiveness. Come on. Help me find the way. Jesus said if you'll draw nigh unto me, me I'll draw nigh unto you. you. Lord, I pray for your forgiveness today.
I'm still a diamond. I need you, Lord. Is there somebody just pray that I need you, Lord? Is there somebody pray with me? I'll serve you, Lord. Is there anybody just pray with me right now? God, save me. God, save me. God, I want your spirit to live in my life. God, I want your spirit to dwell with me. God, I want to dwell with you. was found in a place called the pig pen. I'll let you see the article if you want to see it after church. It's written right there. In U.S. Day to Day, CNN and Reuters, that diamond that was picked up on top of the ground, Marvin, was found in a place called the pig pen. But I want you to know, that's a rare thing when diamonds are just found on top of the ground. Do you know what it takes for most gems to be, to be found and to, to be collected? You've got to dig deep. You've got to mine them from way down deep underground. You've got to move lots of earth. You've got to move lots of rock. You may have to move thousands of tons of dirt, and rock, and granite, to find one simple stone. But I will tell you this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to God. What he has to move out of the way. If you're willing. To become a gemstone for him. He'll move heaven. And earth. To get to where you are. All you've got to do is do like some have done today. And just simply say okay Lord. Forgive me. Help me. Lord, I want to have my name written in that book. For some who have come and are standing here even now, you've made, a, you've made a great start, made a great move toward God. And I will tell you this, you are not defined by who you were. God is going to bless who you are. You are His child. He said, you will be called mine. And in so, when I gather up my jewels, I will give or I will pardon like a son to me.
So I'm here to tell you. Whether anyone else can see beyond the veil, God sees and knows. Would you lift your hands with us today and simply say, Lord Jesus, help me. That's all I want you to pray for a moment. Lord, help me. Help me to be faithful. Lord, help me to be a jewel. Help me to come out from this world and be separate. Help me, Lord Jesus, to be refined. Help me, Lord, to be defined by not who I once was, but by who you say I am. In Jesus' name, I love you, Lord. I worship you. Could you lift your other hand toward heaven and just say, Lord, now I worship you and I praise you. Lord, live and dwell in me. Go with me this week. Speak to my heart. Lord, if this is the first step on the rest of my journey, give me the courage to make step one step after the other till I can be in your presence again. Help me to, to be in, in a part of the church where I can converse and talk and, 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 and encourage myself by being in the body of Christ. Because, Lord, when you break, when you make up your jewels, it's going to be part of the body of Christ that will go. It will be the body of Christ that will ascend to heaven with you. I love you. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for the Spirit of God we feel in the service right now. Bless our guests that are here, our visitors in our service, Lord. Let them feel the love of God and the peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, I've delivered my soul to you today. It's a simple message. But I will tell you this. One day, when the Lord gathers up his jewels, it's going to be worth it all. It doesn't matter what we've done, what we've given, what we've forsaken, and what we've held on to. God's going to bless. I love you. I appreciate you. Come Wednesday night expecting a miracle from